Hi, my name is Susan. I am the knitwear pattern designer and naturally dyed fiber and fiber blend maker of Yoni Makes. Today is Wednesday, October 25th. Um, I had a very busy weekend. As many of you know, it was the Rhinebeck weekend, which, um, and I say Rhinebeck, and it basically is the New York State Sheep and Wool Festival on Saturday and Sunday, which I think only always happens on the third weekend of October, and the events on Friday where there are three yarn events, um, Indie Untangled, Cake Palooza, and Woolen Folk. And this was my first year going to Rhinebeck in any of those events. And I actually was very ambitious and went to all three events on Friday. And I went to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival on Saturday. So I will talk about my experience at those shows and also the acquisitions that I've purchased later on. But first I wanted to show you what I am making and um, finished objects and things like that. So the sweater that I'm wearing today is, this was my very very first sweater design pattern that I released. It is called the Wave Break Sweater. It is a bottom up, drop shoulder. Um, there is an option to do bust starts in the pattern. The yarn that I used is Little Fox's yarns. The colors are Peony Blush and October Leaves. And it's a fairly simple, easy, a um, lot of knitting in the round with slip stitches and color changes. And yeah, this was my first ever sweater design pattern. I have a finished object that I can show you. So a few months ago, earlier in the year, Christina from Teal Torch Knits approached me and asked if I wanted to be part of her Winter Solstice collection. The way Christina and I connected was through Beck. Beck was, um, she was knitting one of my cardigan design, the Sandri cardigan. She was using Teal Torch Knits yarn and she had posted online and I was like, that looks amazing because she did it in like a rainbow gradient colors. And I thought the yarn colors were beautiful. It came out wonderful. And I commented and that's how Teal Torch Knits and I connected through Beck. So thank you, Beck. And so yeah, Christina contacted me. Do I want to be part of this collection? Of course, yes. When you purchase her Winter Solstice, which I believe it is sold out, you either get, there's an option of getting a fingering weight, 21 skeins of the minis, uh, which is a 20 gram minis, so either fingering weight or DK, and you also have an option to add a full skein yarn, 100 gram yarn as an additional. So within this uh, winter solstice collection, you get a little boss bag from that crafty little fox, a stitch minder set from end sticker from DK Graham and a crochet pattern from Brittany Garber, who is not bad Brit on Instagram, and a knit pattern from me. Um, and I'll put a link to all of that below. So this was like an amazing opportunity for me. I was very excited, but I couldn't decide whether to do a fingering or DK. Um, so I told her maybe I'll do both. Why not? It'll be one design pattern but with slight changes for the different weights. And that's what I did and I finished it. It has not been blocked yet. The test knit is, has started um, because there's a very definite deadline for this design. This needs to be ready for December 1st when the, and well, when the advent is happening when you first open and get the package so that's when the pattern will be available for those who purchase the collection to download from Ravelry. So I have a month to get the test knit finished, wrapped up, photos taken and all that. I cannot reveal and I will not reveal the color of 
the the design until I guess January at the end of December when you open all the yarns and see all the colors so it'll be a black and white even now um, Christina was okay with me showing the design I just can't show you the colors obviously so this is the TK version and it is huge it is beautiful so this uses all of the mini skeins every little bit um, there is a little bit left of the of the last yarn which is the main color yarn because when you do the binding um, right it depends on how much yarn you left over to do the binding and you will have a little bit of leftover but yeah this is this is made to use everything so this is the DK version this is the fingering <laughs> this is just a ginormous warm blanket so there is simple slip stitches, knit stitches, purl stitches, and brioche I am working on a video tutorial of how to do a single brioche, two color brioche that will go with the pattern so there's a video tutorials for that I'm going to do one for the bind off how I did the bind off for this um, I'm going to try to make it as beginner friendly as possible and yeah so within the pattern there will be a fingering version and a DK version obviously you don't have to use um, Christina's advent yarn you could use any advent yarn or even just whatever mini skeins you have available or leftover yarns you have available you will, you should be able to knit that with any yarn but Christina's yarn is beautiful beautiful it's, it's so gorgeous so that was the finished object so I have a couple of work in progress um, to show you last time I was talking about my hand dyed um, yarn that I was making into dress that I was going to rework I didn't touch that I didn't really I didn't really get to that and the um, the other version of the stripe away sweater that I was making that is not boucle version this guy that I was making in a regular DK with boucle stripes the original stripe away is flipped so it's a boucle um, body with the regular stripe I actually wore that to the Ryan Bay weekend the second day to the Saturday event I took a lot of photos but I haven't really touched this so nothing really to show if you are curious you can go to the my last video and I kind of show you the yarn and talk about that in more detail but the, the sweater that I was kind of making for like wandering flocks flock along and I kind of showed my progress and how I was going to rip everything out and redo it that has a little bit of progress so <laughs> this is the the cuff I restarted it and made it smaller use a smaller needle with the better tension and I am just starting the body so not much to show the r pinkish color this is fingering weight held um, double this is my own yarn that I naturally dyed I only have a few left on my Etsy store so this is the Lotus Pink uh, superwash, uh, non superwash yarn, fingering weight. So this is being held double with Wondering Flux Beach Party color. So I have that. The other one that I worked on, which was kind of fun, and it's going pretty fast, is the Woolen Honey, the Woolen Honey sweater by Andrea Mari. Last time I was thinking that the tension was a, was a little loose it's because I went up the needle and then I went down a size and the reason was that I don't have enough yarn the yardage that the pattern called for I am short one skein 
so I'm gonna just try to make it as long as I possibly can but yeah there was a reason why the tension was loose but I figure this will be an all over um, garter stitch so it will be somewhat thick just not as thick as the original was meant to be but I think it'll be thick enough so I got fairly far. I need to start using like progress keepers or something just to kind of show how far I went because I don't remember. I think I just did like the one um, hexagon pattern. So this is going pretty fast. So that's what I have so far. Now that I finished the Teal Torch Knits shawl, did I even say the name? It's called Iridian Shawl. So because I finished the shawl, I am now free to work on my collaboration with the yarn lady. This is her mini skein that she had made specifically for this, for this design. So this is the body and then it will have mini skeins. Very excited to start finally on this one. Now the Rhinebeck weekend. Okay, um, if you have been following any of the vendors or people in the yarn industry, you might have heard what happened at Wool & Folk. How awful it was. I am going to speak to you about my experience as a customer, as a shopper, I didn't know any of this. I knew a little bit of the issues just talking to the vendors and people that I wanted to see at the show, but I didn't realize how awful it was. So if you are curious about what happened, um, follow a lot of the vendors that were vending at the show. Um, somebody made a list of all the vendors and I will post that link down there, but I'm sure if you are a lover of knits and yarns, you follow a lot of these people and they have first-hand account of what happened as a vendor. There is a um, Instagram story video that Explore Knits have put out and it's on their Instagram page. She was a vendor and she talks in detail about what happened to her. Um, Lola Beans Co. was a sponsor and they also posted um, in their Instagram and YouTube about their experience and it was not a good experience at all for them. So I highly suggest you go and watch them and read them and they will tell you more in detail. For me, it was just as a shopper, I was there. So on Friday, because this was my first time going, I wanted to do everything. So there's three events, Indian Untangled, Cake Palooza, and Wool and Folk. Indian Untangled and Cake Palooza is a timed entrance. There's four separate timed entrance. For the Indian Untangled, I purchased the second entrance, which was like 11.30 to 1, I want to say. So I went to that, so it was not the first one. There was no crowd. It was actually really nice, except for the rain. It definitely rained a lot. Um... My first stop at Indian Tangled was at Plies and Hellhounds. So Gabby at Plies and Hellhounds had, um, was a test knitter for my Sweet Late sweater, which I wore to the event. And she was my first stop. It was amazing to meet her and see her. She's very tall, which you don't really realize when you are watching her YouTube channel. But, but um, and I'm very short, so I, that could be a reason too. But she was wonderful, so sweet, loved meeting her. Um, I had spoken to her about possible uh, collaboration work and she agreed. So the yarn that I got, which I will show you, was a gifted yarn and that will be used um, for future design. So, oh, I pre-purchased a bag, Indian Tangle. This is their 10th year. 
and this has a zipper which was a godsend this was wonderful in the rain i put all my yarn zipped it up no rain got to it it was amazing so i have four skeins of plies and hellhounds this is in her nectar base which is 60% uh, superwash merino 20% yak and 20% silk this is slow motion love potion all her colors were so great i was there for like a very long time trying to decide which color I love that it's dark without being too solid you know black it has it still has that depth of color it's super moody I really love it I think the stitches will come out really well in this shade so my goal for this festival was try to get yarns and talk to people or see people that I haven't met before so I really wanted to support people that I that is new to me um, so Plyden and Hellhounds yarns I've never used and the next stop is Red Pansy I really fell in love with this space this is Snuggle Silk which is 70% Mulberry Silk 30% Fine Merino and I got a corresponding DK yarn to go with it, same color, this is Sunrise. And I love this base, it's not the mohair or um, surrey silk, this is less prickly, softer. So the next stop is at Aster Fiber Co. I love this color, it's... I love those little speckly things that you see. And then this is the baby Surrey alpaca silk that goes with it. This is uh, nothing, nothing gold can stay. That's the name. This is their smooth sock base. This is their plum base, plume base. So I got these three. So last time I talked about um, making socks. I've never made socks before. So I was in the market to find a uh, self-striping yarn. So I got this from Geektastic Fibers. Love the colors. They had a different base. This is Superwash Targi Nylon 9010. And they had a different base. I forget what other base. So I asked them, like, what's the difference? What's better? Um, she recommended this for someone who is new. I think the other one was a lot thicker or sturdier. I can't remember. But can't wait to try this. Then this is Brico Lodge Studios. She had these wonderful fibers. Look at this poofy, poofy. Look at this poofiness. I love this one. This is the Coopworth CVM Merino Tusa Silk Angelina. It has everything. Um, this is two ounce. The name is Carnelian. I'm very excited to spin this up. It's um, It has a bit of toothiness to it, which will be great for spinning. It'll really catch the fibers together. Um, Indian Tangle had two like big barn, like open air barn with a roof, um, about five minute walk distance from each other. There was a golf cart that went back and forth to drive people, to move people around if they wanted to. I decided to walk because it did rain while I was in the barns, but um, while I was walking, it was just drizzling. It was fine. It was a, it was a nice open spot, lots of grass, um, a little muddy but it wasn't so bad. There was also a tent outside, a huge tent with round tables and seatings and like music going on and a couple of uh, food vendors so you could grab your food, just sit there and eat and chill and that's what I did because I had about an hour in between the end of Indie Untangled and the beginning of my time slot at Cake Palooza which was the third time slot. Um, which started at 2, 2.30 so I had time to relax and sit and chill, listen to music it was really nice uh, so I made my way to Cake Palooza I was about 5 minute drive away Cake Palooza I think happens at their stores back 
a parking lot spot or something like that. Um, the parking was street parking. We just had to park on the side of the road, sort of. Um, there was a, also a big um, like a supermarket across the street. I guess you could have parked there. I parked on the street. I got there about 10 to 15 minutes before the time slot. And we had to wait across the street from the quick palooza just standing in line and while we were standing in line the the showrunners had come and gave out stuff so they were like who's the first in line they got a mini skein and everyone that was kind of there just a few just the first few got some um, stitch markers and things like that so because I was one of the first ones waiting I got this lovely stitch marker from this is Birdie Parker and then they were also doing like little games like who's wearing the brightest sweater, handmade sweater and I was wearing my pink um, sweet lace sweater and then another woman also had like a really bright pink sweater so we both got another stitch marker this is from Bobo Leros it was so cute So and then they were doing like other things little trivia questions and whoever got the answer they would get a stitch marker or like ruler or little little prizes and things like that it was very cute it was it was very well done you know you weren't you were standing in the rain but they made it they made it fun and nice okay so when we trivia question we're... number two where is the knit kit from where do they live where does the knit, the makers of the knit kit live? The U.S. <laughs> U.S. but what state? <laughs> what state? Missouri. No, no, no New Jersey, no Missouri. New York. Oregon? Nope. New York. Nope. It's summer camp, right? Yeah. Where are they from? Oh, I don't Washington? know. Jersey? Nope. No. no. Massachusetts? Florida. Connecticut. Florida. Nope. 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 So when we went in, it wasn't that crowded. It was still a little drizzly, but it wasn't so bad. There was enough space to move around. The booth, like the popular booth, yeah, were a little... You just had to wait in line, but everybody was very chill and great. And people who were vending were, were in a good mood regardless. And then and it was great. I met um, uh, Chelsea Nitz, and who I've always wanted to meet. I wanted to see her gold rush colorway i think but that color actually was a little too dark and green for me so i got this is favorite leather boots color this was a lot a um, little bit more brighter and i think it worked better on my skin so i got this one and it just happened that at this event i ended up purchasing from um makers who I've purchased before. So I have purchased Chelsea Lux's yarn. I think I got the merino linen yarn from her before from my local yarn store. This is the first time I am using her... Is this DK? No. Worsted. Baby alpaca worsted. Yeah, this is her worsted weight. Um, 80-20 superwash merino baby alpaca. Yeah, I've never used this base before. Which it's very exciting. This is fairy tale. This is so pretty. I think she made like a boucle cardigan out of this colorway and I loved, I loved it. So I got these two. And when you purchase from Chelsea Yarns, you get uh, this beautiful bag. Next stop was Tough Woolens. I love their fragrance. I use their wool wash. And I have a couple of their hand lotion. I got to smell everything. Oh, I love the smell. This is 5th and 57th. And then I got to see and meet Amanda from Melanated Boho Bay. And I got to get one of her fiber. This color is so amazing. And I've been wanting to use this base. I think this is the Merino Bamboo. The white part. I guess it's the bamboo and it doesn't dye, but it creates this beautiful color, this marbleizey color, so I love this. And there was a truck, I forget the name of the, it's like a yarn truck, I guess they travel around, they have yarns, I got to go in there, there's a little bit of footage of that. Um, 
And yeah, I didn't really stay that long. I got to meet Summer Camp Fiber. I made my strike away sweater using her yarn, her boucle and her DK yarn. So I got to meet her. I only stayed there about 30-40 minutes. Both India Untangled and Cake Palooza only had about 30 vendors each, so it was a it wasn't a huge festival, a huge um, event. Um, but it was enough, like they had enough of stuff that you can gonna go and see. <laughs> the next stop was Woolen Folk. That was a whole day ticketed event. There was no time slot. You just went in whenever you want. You can go in and out. Um, I deliberately did not want to be the first one to those events or any of these events because I knew that it's the busiest and the crowdest the first couple of hours. So when I got to Woolen Folk, it was about 30 minute drive from Cape Palooza to Woolen Folk and it was around 3.30 ish. I saw a lot of people leaving and I got a pretty good parking spot like right across the street because people had had left so that was great so my experience my experience was great I got to meet everyone that I wanted to meet um, I got to shop a lot um, from the vendors that I that were new to me and I got to meet them and squish all their yarns and I I had a great time as a shopper and I think that speaks more for the vendors the people who were vending than the, the event coordinators, right? Because they, despite all the issues that they had, which I didn't know at the time, it's coming out after the fact, but knowing now what they had to go through to be there on that day, like it's horrible, but the but they were putting on a, on a happy face, they were welcoming, they were trying to make the best of it and because of them I had a good experience <sighs> which was a shame they shouldn't have to like do that it should be a, a good experience to be there to vent to shop but it wasn't and um, so when I got there at 3 30 I saw Irina from Fiber Chats leaving and she was also one of the testers for my Sweetly sweater and she was wearing the sweater so it was so wonderful to see her we just literally she was we would have missed each other if I was there like five minutes late so I got to see her um, and then you walk in there's a couple of stone steps there's a table that's where you show your ticket and um, there was no line there was a couple of people in front of me they had like a, sh a QR code I guess with like the updated vendor list and that thing didn't work they were like sorry but there's like another QR code like in on the wall over there that I could I could do the thing. Um, I actually didn't really look for it because I was just gonna walk around and, and look around myself. I should have because it was a maze. It was very hard to get to. I I try, I think I tried to get to all the vendors but it was hard to find them because there was a building here, there was a building there, there was upstairs and there was a fifth floor and then around the corner there's more event. Like it was it was very hard to find people. The first you go in, there's some vendors outside in the tent. Oh, first there was like a big truck with like baskets. Um, I forget the name, but they, I think there's a video that I shot of them. And then there's some vendors along the path into the grassy area. And there was a huge tent and they were doing like the podcast an interviewee thing at the time that I walked in. So there were some chairs in front and there was a couple of vendors that were right behind them and they were um, Judo Fibers and Camellia Fibers. Uh, they, I've, I went to the show to see a lot of the vendors that I've connected through online and Instagram and they were one of them. Shannon I've met at Vogue Knitting Life 
this earlier in the year and Sylvia, I've only talked to her, I've never actually met her in person um, but I was really looking forward to seeing her and I was like, why are you guys here in the mud? because they were on the grass but it was all like wet and it was mud I fell in, my, half my boots were in the mud and they told me that yeah, it was insane they were flooded the initial spot that they were in was flooded they had to move at the beginning of the show at 12 o'clock while people were walking in and it was not an ideal spot to vent it was just like behind the chairs sort of next to i don't know i guess they were selling merch uh the show merch table or something i felt Awful. It was hard for me to walk into their space. I, there was no way if you were in a wheelchair or anything like that, you just you couldn't get to them. So that was like the first sign of like, oh, what in the world is happening? Um, so Camellia Fiber had a very limited um, roving. She, this is called Chogakpo. Chugakpo roving. This is um, some wool and her scrap yarn that she made into woving. She also made into yarn. And I had messaged her saying, I really, really want one. It's amazing. And she kindly, kindly, kindly said that she would hold one for me. And I wanted to give something back. So I have some of my naturally dyed art bats and comb tops. So let's do a swap so I brought my fiber and she actually gave me two so I can't wait to spin these this is like it looks gray but there's like bits of color within it very subtle but it's beautiful can't wait for this so this was a fiber swap with camellia um and yeah, I just tried to walk around. There was a building in the back, which is where I started. And I think there was like a stair steps to go up. A fairly narrow step. I don't know if there was an elevator access to go to the second floor. I don't think so. And then there were some people there. And then there was like another way to go outside, I want to say. And that was where Sorella was. They had like a little balcony area. And that was a very busy spot also uh, so I got my DK weight um, sweater quantity of her what color is this Waverly place beautiful warm grayish tone color so I got five skeins of this. So Sorella was also new to me. I know they're very well known, but I've never purchased yarn from them. They also gave out these totes when you purchase yarn. I think I got the last one. That, that's what they were saying. Like This was the last one. Would you like a tote? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. I would like a tote. I think, I think they want a different building. Um, Dragon Horde Yarn. I also have heard of her, I've seen her, I think she has a YouTube, I followed her, loved her, this is first time um, purchasing yarn from her, and so the lighting where they were, they were indoors, but the lighting was terrible, I couldn't see anything, I would grab something yarn, oh it looks pretty, and then they were like, oh you can go by the window and see the colors if you like, and it was like a completely different color, it was terrible but she actually had a little lamp that showed like the the natural light settings and that was great so I was standing in front of that lamp for a long time trying to pick the colors that I wanted this is her DK super wash merino color allergic to color this is the name that's the name of the color allergic to color I love this gray bluish gray with like there's like little speckles of yarn and um, speckles of color little bits of it though and then I got two skeins of fingering weight of Farah Darling Farah? I think that's how you pronounce it it's the the Court of Thrones and Roses 
cord uh, you know the book and this is a cozy cardigan cord of thorns and roses is that anyways and I have read that book so I don't know why I don't know the name of it The next we purchased, I think, were on the fifth floor, possibly. So, Woolens and Nosh, this was another self striping yarn. It's actually very similar to the Geektastic one, sort of, but different enough. Um, Wool and Nosh actually was very smart. They had made socks with all of their colorways and they had it hanging on their sock blocker, just like in a, as if, like a coat hanger. So, you can see what color they would make up. And this is what I got from them. So this is definitely new to me. No, they weren't on the fifth floor. They were on the floor that would take that where the elevator was to take you to the fifth floor, I think. So one of the buildings had a big sign by the door that says there's vendors in fifth floor do not miss. And I found out later on that this wasn't set up by the showrunners. Um, who did not really provide an adequate map of where everybody was, this was made, that sign was made by one of the vendors on the fifth floor. You would not know that they were there if there was no sign. So thank goodness for that sign. So on the fifth floor, I th think they were on the fifth floor. Silly Goose Yarns were up there with its beautiful yellow, browny, warm color. This is the yellow that I wanted. I think the yellow which color from Chelsea yarn was too dark and then the yellow that I did get is a little lighter but I love this dark warm color of uh, caramel drizzle so I got five skeins of this sweater quantity and they also gave out a tote bag which is really nice super sturdy it'll fit if it's a lot of yarns and then my final stop was at Cedar closet, cedar closet yarn. I got a little stitch marker for, with my purchase. So I think the cedar closet yarn is um, actually Amy's trinket shops. It's her uh, like a yarn collection, yarn yarn brand names. Uh, because when I when I look for their names, it didn't it didn't pop up. There's no information about their companies. But they are the, here, this is exclusive line of luxury yarns called Cedar Closet Yarns. This is, this is what I found from an old Indian Tangled website. So I got their Chunky, two skeins of their Chunky Paper Bark color. Really nice, creamy. Um, white, but not too white. It has some variegated colors in there. It looks really warm. So, all new to me. Oh, I totally forgot to mention the Mabel purchase. This was also at Wool and Folk. This is Mabel. I was already using it, so I totally forgot. Look at this cute little bag. This is the medium size. They have a small, medium, and large, and then they have a bunch of like clothes and jackets. I think next time I'm gonna grab the jackets. But this fits my um, wool and honey project really well. I just kind of carry this around when I want to go knit in the living room or things like that. So really cute. And that's that was Friday. I was I was exhausted by five o'clock. I cannot imagine what the vendors were feeling. Um.
um, thankfully, I have a friend that actually lives in town, so I got to stay with her, spend a wonderful day for dinner with her. And I, the next day was New York State Sheep and Wool Festival. And I made my way there around uh, 10.30, I want to say. Um, around 11 a.m., there was an Asian, marker, Asian maker meeting set up by Wandering Flock on the hill. That's where a lot of the meetings happen. Um, and I got to, I basically just stayed there for like three hours in the rain because it rained. Um, I was wearing my stripe away sweater and I had no umbrella because I didn't want to bother carrying my tiny broken umbrella. And I didn't get wet at all. So that boucle yarn is like rain waterproof. It was, I wasn't cold, I wasn't wet, my skin underneath was not, like I was perfectly fine. <laughs> I was pretty comfortable. Um, I also met a lot of the knitters and, and makers. I just got to hang out next to Amy from La Anime and Moondrake and, and just, you know, Aro from Our Knits and Pearls, um, Andrea from Knitting PT. They were just, they were just there. Um, yeah, it was bizarre that, like, why am I here? But it was wonderful. Took a lot of photos. Um, afterward, I had to go home. My day was, my, my weekend away was over. But before I left, I walked around a little bit. Uh, Um, made a couple of purchases not yarns though this was a little pamphlet they gave out with the map of where everybody's located this was a great way because it's really easy to get lost there I purchased this little lamb thing this is a from Englishman Bay so you get to make, you wrap the yarn around, you get to make a little sheep. And there's like a bell and stuff. So cute. They had a bunch of different colors. You could needle felt them. They had the needle felt one. This is just, this is a no needle one. You just wrap the yarn around. And I finally, finally got my sock blocker. So I couldn't really find a lot of sock blocker. This was like the last one that I saw. There weren't because, yeah, there weren't that, there weren't that many options that I could choose from. It's seems fairly cheap and thin and I think I need to sand it a bit. It was 10 bucks. Uh, we'll see how long this lasts, but it's something. So that's it. That's all I got from Ryan back. I didn't get to see as many animals as I wished I could see. I couldn't stay that long. Um, I had to drive back. That was a very tiring drive back. Next time, I wish, uh, I hope to stay longer, maybe go on a Sunday and see more of the animals. Uh, maybe bring my kids. Not on a Saturday though. Saturday was pretty packed. There was a lot of people. It was, it was hard to move around. The food line was too long and I was too tired. So I ended up buying a couple of apples. <laughs> there was an apple vendor. There was no line and it was delicious and fresh so got a couple of apples and that was it so many things are happening regarding woolen folk many people are speaking out please hear them please support the smaller vendors that were vending there I think the bigger names were fine some of the bigger names were saying like even like we're good thank you for caring go support the people who's not as well known or have the bigger as biggest platform as they would have so 
yeah, just because they were vending, that doesn't mean they didn't do well. Like, you know, there are, there are a few big names that did really well, and there were a lot of people in their sections. They had a really nice spot. Um, but there were other vendors who were, like, in the corner, like Terrapin Fibers. I, I She was, like, in this dark corner behind another vendor. It did not look safe being there. And if you read her post, she and another vendor had to figure out how to get into the space because she didn't get an assigned space. And it's and I feel sad because then, like, will they ever come to New York to vend? Probably not. This was this was a terrible traumatic experience. But I, I want to see them in person. And anyway, I'm being selfish. So that was my experience at Rhineback and my makes. I really hope I get to do more spinning. I want to spin some of the fibers that I got from the show. So hopefully I'll have more things to show on that front. Yeah, so thank you so much for being here and listening to me talk about my yarn life. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye.